a lot of people in, in medical device uh, industry doing clinical trials still rely very heavily on ICH E6. And there have been updates to ICH E6 that help support what we are hoping to do in a controlled clinical research environment. But of course, it doesn't speak directly to medical devices because it's written for pharmaceuticals. So we're going to talk about how using ICH and ISO could be complementary. Obviously, 21 CFR 812 here in the U.S outside the U.S. looking at the EU directive, et cetera. But we're really focused today on comparing ISO 14155 and ICH E6 GCP revision 2 and how we can use those to support our, our studies. So we'll talk about the purpose and governing bodies of both ISO and ICH. We'll talk also about the core principles of each document. What are they really founded upon? What are their, you know, really the scope of those? documents. We'll look at similarities as well as key differences in the content and approach, and look at additional sources of information that relate to the conduct and oversight of compliant medical device studies. So looking at ISO, it's a worldwide federation of national standards bodies, and the U.S. is part of ISO. So ISO 14155 was adopted in 2011. Prior to this, for several years, we had ISO 14155 parts one and two, but these were merged together to give us a global standard on clinical investigation for medical device studies. So we're going to be looking specifically at the document of clinical investigation of medical devices for human subjects, good clinical practice. And this standard looks at the design, conduct, recording, and reporting of clinical investigations carried out in human subjects to assess the safety or performance of those medical devices for regulatory purposes. So good clinical practice, how we address those things. And there are general requirements. So as we're going to see with ICH E6, we have those 13 principles. ISO also has those general requirements. So to protect the right safety and well-being of human subjects, ensure scientific conduct of the clinical investigation and the credibility of the results. So one of the things I always put out there as um, an auditor is that what we're really ultimately looking for, regardless of therapeutic area or indication or even investigational product type, we are looking for good data from protected subjects. So if we can think of that as our goal, then we can appreciate how these documents, even though they were not written specifically for medical devices perhaps, can be used to support that end goal and fill in some of those gray areas, maybe some of those cracks. I often say, too, that what we are looking for is anything that can add tensile strength to the security net that we are building around our subjects and our data. So ISO talks about protecting the right safety and well-being of human subjects, ensure that we are conducting that study so it's scientifically sound, it defines the responsibilities of the sponsor and the principal investigator who's engaged in the conduct of that study. It is a tool for assisting investigators, sponsors, ethical committees, regulatory authorities, and other bodies involved in the conformity assessment of medical devices. So the ethical considerations that ISO puts forward, as I said, these are going to mirror what we see in ICH E6. Clinical investigations shall be conducted in accordance with the ethical principles that have their origin in the Declaration of Helsinki. These principles protect the right, safety, and well-being of subjects. They are the most important considerations and shall prevail over the interests of science and society. So already we see a similarity to ICH E6, if not exact language. These principles shall be understood, observed, and applied at every step in the clinical investigation. And what I like with some of this language that's specific to ISO, for example, is that it's not just enough, you know, ICH does tell us that you have to have knowledge of, that you're going to follow these things, but ISO says that you need to understand them. So it falls up on us, those of us you know, sponsors, for example, that are providing training for how to conduct these studies, that we are not just putting training out there. So as an auditor, I spend a lot of time looking at well, how did you ensure that you gave investigators all the information they needed to properly conduct that study? It's a regulatory requirement. How did you make sure that they had knowledge of and would follow good clinical practice? How did you train them to be compliant? Not just putting up a slide at an investigator meeting, 
with the regulations written out, but writing those robust sturdy protocols so that if you follow those protocols, you are going to by default be in compliance with those regulations. 